Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, former President Trump expected to testify in his civil case in New York. We're going to tell you what's at stake. Also, the latest on the war between Israel and Gaza as our reporter goes into Gaza for the first time since the war began, embedded with Israeli forces. You'll see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Cherry lips, crystal skies, I can show you incredible things. Taylor Swift has outdone herself yet again. 1989 Taylor's version tops the Billboard 200 with her best first week tally for an album ever. Billboard says it's the biggest first week for any album since another disc named for a number, Adele's 25, nearly eight years ago. Half a billion in gold is on its way to a terrorist cell. And the gold needs to disappear. What's your plan? We gotta steal it mid-flight, 40,000 feet in a year. We're taking the plane, the whole plane? It's kind of hard to take half a plane. Kevin Hart's Cyrus Whitaker leads a criminal crew forced by an Interpol agent played by Gugu Mbata Raw to pull off a mid-air heist in Lyft. Netflix just released the first trailer for the action thriller, which lands on the streaming service January 12th. I am now court ordered to host my very own late night talk show. Deck the halls and brace for Tis the Grinch holiday talk show. Saturday Night Live's James Austin Johnson channels Dr. Seuss's green grumpy Christmas curmudgeon for the Wondery podcast, which debuts today. Hanging with the who's down in Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. Ahead the next hour, GMSA, we're coming out of one of the most expensive Halloweens, what Thanksgiving could look like for your wallet. Plus, is it the best option to dip into your retirement savings? We'll take a look at other ways to save as well as how the different generations are preparing for retirement. Tomorrow's your last chance to cast your vote. What's on the ballot and where to find the nearest polling place? That's all happening and so much more on GMSA at 6. But before we go to break, let's check Transguide one more time, scanning the cameras around the highways and byways of the Alamo City. Traffic is starting to build out there with the time change and all. We'll be right back. As a community in Maine grieves from last month's mass shooting, we're looking back at the 2017 Sutherland Spring shooting. It was six years from yesterday. What a local attorney says could have prevented both tragedies. And this morning, we're talking all things money from what trends finance experts are seeing this month to how much your Thanksgiving meal might cost. And taking a look outside with Live cam, 66 degrees at 6 a.m. Hey, it's a little bit muggy out there and warmer today, but Mike says a cool front is going to be here in a couple of days. He'll explain that in just a bit. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday, November 6th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Uh, good to see that you gentlemen are growing in your beards nicely for No Shave November. We're six days in, or did you guys get a head start? Mike got a bit of a head, I got a head start. start. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. But we're catching up pretty quick now. Yeah. I, no, we're not. Never mind. I just <laughs> I just got a closer look. I stopped, I stopped shaving uh, last time was the Friday before the Halloween. So, okay. so it's been a little more than almost a week and a half. Did you see so. me change my mind as I literally? Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> Hasn't started itching yet. I'll just say that. But okay. again, for good cause, if you can donate, that would really help out. All right. You were talking about the mugginess and yesterday as well as Saturday we had some fog in the morning and we've got some of that around here this morning as well. Nothing showing up in this picture, but notice how now all of a sudden New Braunfels, which was about eight miles visibility, now you're down to just one mile visibility. So it popped up that quickly and as like yesterday when that starts to develop there around New Braunfels, likes to kind of work its way down 35 a little bit. So watch it around Randolph as well because you're probably going to be seeing some of this fog a little bit up around Austin. Mile and three quarters at Beeville, two and a half Victoria. So again, the thickest right now is there around New Braunfels. Everybody with, well, just two exceptions there. Uvalde and uh, Hondo, a pair of 58s, but everybody's in the 60s right now. So we're anywhere from 10 to almost 15 degrees above normal. Light amounts of the allergens. The updated count comes out in about uh, an hour and a half or so. Temperature is going to be staying steady this morning. We'll have some of that fog around here and with the fog, maybe some damp roads. Then we make it up into the upper 70s above the normal high by noon and we'll top off today at 82. So anywhere from 5 to 10 degrees above normal. That's 
that's going to be the situation not only today, but tomorrow as well as Wednesday. Then the front moves through. We'll talk about that. Rain chances and cooler temperatures just in time for the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen. Earlier this yeah. morning, there was, I know, a long line long of lights of roads. There. Yeah, you know what? Uh, that's already cleared out, Mike. And you said you start, you got a head start on no shave about a, a earlier in the, what, few days ago before? Yeah, but the last Friday of uh, October. Yeah, I stopped shaving a month ago. This is all I got, so <laughs> I'm kidding, <laughs> kidding. Hey, but you know what? Uh, no jokes outside, guys. Things are looking great. 35 there. You can see these tra trans guide cameras are showing a pretty smooth commute for a lot of folks that are getting the day started early with us. If you have to head out the door, just be on the lookout. We do at least have one stalled vehicle. They reported along Loop 1604 southbound right there at Marbach Road. And again, this is pretty early in the morning, so we don't see a lot of issues. But if you see those flashing lights or any vehicles off to the side, make sure to move over or slow down. Thankfully, no slowdowns. If you're drought traveling in from 37 northbound from Pleasanton, it's still pleasant with 28 minutes at this hour. US 90 eastbound. If you're heading in from Castroville, your arrival should take about 28 minutes and that arrival from Lytle also 15 minutes. If you're heading along I 35 northbound, I'll continue to watch the roadways closely, but don't forget plenty of road projects are taking place. I'll tell you what to expect coming up in the next few minutes, guys. We're now seeing the person behind the mass shooting in Maine last month, as well as several failures to report and prevent that situation from happening. It's very similar to this shooting in Sutherland Springs that left 26 dead on a Sunday morning. Yesterday marked six years since Sutherland Springs. George Legrand represents some of the survivors in a suit against the government. In the 2017 shooting, the gunman bought a weapon after the Air Force failed to report his history of violence. And in Maine, similar failures have been revealed. Their main significant eerie kind of similarity is that there are laws on the books that if those laws had been complied with, those two shootings probably would have been prevented. Now, Maine has what is called a yellow flag law. It allows law enforcement to temporarily keep someone they suspect is mentally ill and poses a threat to themselves or others. In turn, that can trigger a 14 day weapon restriction by a judge, which can be drawn out to a year. Now, the main shooter was hospitalized at a mental health facility over this summer following an incident while at a military training facility. His family also repeatedly reported to law enforcement his deteriorating mental state and the fact he was heavily armed. A deputy went to the gunman's home and reported hearing a noise inside, but no one answered the door. Without making contact, the yellow flag law could not have been used. After several calls for a ceasefire, Israel was set to come under pressure today to avoid more casualties. Now Secretary of State Antony Blinken is set to meet with Turkey's foreign minister today following his unannounced visit to the West Bank to meet with Palestinian Authority President. But after Blinken repeated U.S. concerns that a ceasefire could help Hamas, Israeli Prime Minister ruled that out unless hostages held by Hamas were released. In the war zone, Israel's military says it's making progress in its ground attack, saying it has now cut Gaza in two surrounding Gaza cities ahead of an unexpected assault. The war between Israel and Hamas continues with its effects being felt all over the world. A Texas pizza shop owner was actually stranded in Gaza when Hamas terrorists descended on Israel and Israel launched a counterattack. Palestinian American Heshamaka Heshmakud and his brothers were visiting family at the time. Because the bombing, you know, there, it's a small area and there is no safe area there. Now, luckily, they were able to find safe refuge by crossing into Egypt, but many of their family members are still stuck in Gaza. Interest rates may be set for the rest of the year. Freddie Mac reports that for today, the current average interest rate for a 30 year fixed mortgage is 7.79%. That's down 26 basis points from a week ago. And the experts at Barclays now think the Fed will hold the line on the rates as its next meeting in mid December, the last of the year. But they also think the Fed could push rates up again in January. Speaking of morning money news for many Americans, their biggest stash of savings is in their retirement plan. So when faced with financial hardship, some choose to dip into that account. But is that always the best option? Here's ABC's Rena Roy with different options to consider. There are broadly two types of tax advantage retirement accounts available to American workers. An IRA is available to any working American with earned income. The other type of an account is an employer-sponsored account, and your employer has to offer it 
for you to be able to access it. And that's a 401k. Bank rate analyst James Royal says that for both IRA and 401k accounts, when you withdraw money earlier than age 59 and a half, the U.S. government imposes a 10% penalty. There are a number of hardships that allow you to take money out of an IRA and avoid the 10% bonus penalty. Uh, Being flat broke, however, unfortunately, is not one of them. Qualifying hardships differ based on the type of retirement account you have, but you may be able to make a penalty-free withdrawal for medical bills if you're permanently disabled or have a terminal illness, if you're a victim of domestic abuse after a natural disaster, for your first home purchase, for higher education expenses, for debts owed to the IRS, and for payments to the other spouse as part of a divorce. But even if you can avoid the 10% penalty, Royal says you can't avoid the taxes, and he suggests only tapping into your retirement account if it's a last resort. So you take that money out today, and that might be a relatively modest sum of money, but you're losing the compounding over time that it could become. So if you took out $5,000 today, that could easily be forty or $50,000 from your future self. Royal says there are some other options you can consider, like taking a loan from your 401k account or a bank or credit union, taking advantage of promotional credit card offers, and trying to get help from family and friends. The thing is, when you tap a retirement account early, the money comes out, but it really can't go back in. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. And according to a new report by the Mercer CFA Institute Global Pension Index, the U.S. retirement system scored a 63 out of 100. This is due to high inflation and an increase in people needing a second job. And new data from Vanguard says millennials and Gen Xers are in better financial shape than boomers when it comes to saving for retirement. That's because more employers nowadays are automatically enrolling workers in a 401k savings plan. ABC personal finance experts have three money tips they think you should be making this month. Number one, it's open enrollment season, so pay close attention when you're reviewing your benefits. This year, the share of employees who were satisfied with their benefits fell from 64% to 61%. That's the lowest satisfaction rate in 10 years. And three in 10 Gen Z workers say they regret the benefit decisions they made last open enrollment. Almost half said they didn't understand how their benefits impacted their finances. Number two, nearly 10 million people previously insured through Medicaid have been disenrolled so far this year. If you were removed from the program, you still need benefits. You can reapply for Medicaid by December 15th. And lastly, it's time to use up the rest of your flexible spending account dollars. You can use an FSA to buy sunscreen, feminine products, over-the-counter medications, medical equipment, and much more. If you're not quite sure how to spend your leftover money, check out fsastore.com. This is kind of interesting. A new study from Deloitte Insight says men are not only statistically just as likely to splurge as women on shopping, but they actually spend more money on average when they do decide to treat themselves. Deloitte surveyed consumers in about 23 countries about spending habits, compiling a database of roughly 150,000 splurge purchases with details on what shoppers bought, how much they spent and why they made the purchase. Data shows men worldwide are spending 40% more and spend an average of $39, while women spend about $28. And it's even more for millennial men who have a median splurge of 53 bucks. And men account for 57% of global splurges on food and drinks. And if you're already planning your Thanksgiving menu, you'll notice turkey prices, they are dropping, but side dishes, they're going up. So turkey prices dropped 30% this year, according to the 2023 Wells Fargo Thanksgiving report that was released this week. However, compared to last year, canned cranberries will cost 60% more this year. Canned pumpkin is up 30% and green beans and potatoes, they're up 13%. One of San Antonio's longest holiday traditions needs some help. The annual Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner needs volunteers to help the tens of thousands of people. At Thanksgiving dinner, V is offering free bus rides to the event, which will be, as always, at the Henry V. Gonzalez Convention Center on Thanksgiving Day. If you want to sign up to be a volunteer, go to Raul Jimenez Dinner.com. 611 and 66 degrees. Glad you're with us on this Monday morning. A popular reality dating show is looking for contestants up in Austin. We'll tell you how you can find your next boo. And a local shelter is helping you find your next pet. 
but construction is causing issues with their adoptions. Outside with live cam, 66 degrees, very mild out there right now, waiting for that sun to come up, maybe sleeping a little bit or didn't set, set its clock back. But uh, we're gonna check in on traffic with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here live on GMSA. 615 construction on a busy Converse roadway could take a while to get finished. Crews began work to expand Rocket Lane near Jetson High School last fall. Now, according to the assistant city manager, it could be done next spring at the earliest and says weather is causing delays. The Converse Animal Shelter is a private no kill shelter right in the middle of all that construction. The president says they're frustrated with how long this is all taking and says it's costing them donations and adoptions. I would like to think that we're all here for the better of Converse and we kind of feel like we are being um, forgotten about and tossed aside. Grimes says the shelter will have to build a new entrance because of the road construction. Demolition of the current one will cost the nonprofit about $11,000. 616 and 66 degrees. We're going to check in with Stephen on the roads. Howdy. Well, not a lot happening, guys. Thankfully, it's been a pretty smooth morning as we get the commute rolling. Let's get a look outside. Traffic just getting a little bit busier now that we've entered that 6 a.m. hour. 410, as you can see behind me, traffic is coming right at your screen there in the north and southbound lanes there at 410 at Ray Ellison. We did have some overnight construction that was lingering around a little while, and that's already cleared out. And you can see traffic, again, picking up a bit, but no major issues to report. We did have that one stall I was watching here at 1604 southbound near Marbach Road. That is already cleared out, so good news. And pretty much that's what we're going to see at least at this hour. Give it another 20, 30 minutes. We'll see the roads pick up with a little bit more congestion as always. It does also look like we have a new stall vehicle reported along 410. You could see it right there along I-37, close to the southeast side. So I'll watch that, see how it could impact your drive time. But just make sure you plan ahead. Mark this on your calendars for Wednesday, November 8th. We have beam setting. We haven't really talked about what's going on along I-35 in a little bit. So just plan ahead because this work takes us up to November 11th. That's on a Saturday. But the work starts at 9 at night and finishes at 5 in the morning. Drivers, during that time, you'll see a full closure of the eastbound and westbound lanes of Topperwine Road right there along I-35. Go ahead and scan this QR code. Get in the know before you go. We have a full list of closures I updated earlier this morning, so always good to know what to expect before you head out the door. Just make sure you plan the commute ahead of time. Thankfully, the commute right now shaping up to be pretty decent. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. All right, let's roll the bus and uh, jackets. Probably not this no. morning. No, yesterday was kind of that dampish cool. We we're in the 50s. Wasn't cold, but with all that humidity out there, 66 right now. A couple of patches of fog here and there. I'm going to show you that in just a second. There's a lot of thick fog up around New Braunfels again this morning. Then 82 for a high temperature. Normal high is right around mid 70s. Oh. So on average, we're five, almost 10 degrees above normal. That's going to be the case all the way through Wednesday. Then we get the next front moving on through here. So take a look at uh, what the beautiful picture, even though this isn't isn't from around here, but grandson's first visit to the Pacific Ocean there in Santa Monica, California. Really cool looking picture. Watching some memories get made right there. No kidding. Thank you very much for that KSAC Connect shot. All right, looking off to the east right now, you see just a couple of clouds hanging around here. No problem at the airport as far as visibility. Uh, New Braunfels has actually dropped down even further down to just a half mile right now. That's the only, well, Gonzalez, a hint of it. And then there's more up around Austin, but it's just that one little spot right there. Same thing yesterday happened in Kerrville. So again, the ingredients are in place right now. Now we've got a little bit of a breeze in places and that helps to prevent some of that fog from forming. Uh, Beeville's back down to just a quarter mile visibility uh, Four at Victoria. Same thing up around Austin. So again, we got to watch out for these little pockets of some of the, of the thick fog. Low 80s yesterday here in town, 81 degrees, 87 at Catula and 86 at Carrizo Springs. About the same situation today. We're going to be at 82. Pretty consistent all around the metropolitan area and around the country. Uh, the only freezing temperature right now is up there around Caribou, Maine. Yes, it is cold up to the north as you would expect, but not like what it was. Remember early last week when we had the front move through here and we had those temperatures that were down in single digits up there to the north. So we've got a lot of clouds around here right now. We're going to keep a fair amount of clouds around throughout the day and then also notice how all the activity is way up there up to the north. So. With the temperatures being warmer up to the north, relatively speaking, and all the activity, this is the zonal pattern in the jet stream. So everything stays right up there, northern tier of the United States. We don't get anything really going on around here. Just 
warmer temperatures and some of that humidity. Same situation the next couple of days. Then that next trough is going to start to dig out there to the west, and that'll be enough cold air kind of forcing its way down here, and that's going to pull the front through on Thursday, and that will obviously knock temperatures down. We still have some rain around here, especially late Thursday overnight into Friday, and that cooler air will stay in place through the weekend, but it looks like going into, say, the middle part of next week, we get another surge of some of that, uh, that warmer air trying to work its way back on in here, but at least this weekend looks very nice. So the forecast today, 82, 85 tomorrow, 83 on Wednesday. I think a couple of extra clouds on Wednesday, but still these numbers overall are 10, 5, 10 degrees above normal, low temperatures uh, anywhere from 10 to 15 above normal. Front comes through later about mid-afternoon Thursday, and that's going to touch off some showers, a couple of thunderstorms, even a couple of hefty downpours can't be ruled out. So it's going to be wet Friday, first part of the day, windy as well, cooler, nice looking, uh, nice looking weekend, and of course, Saturday, Veterans Day. Yes, last weekend of Worst Fest. It, yes, indeed. It's going to be great for that. I mean, beautiful this weekend, but in the 80s, got to have cool temperatures to eat bratwurst and drink beer outside. Sarah, I'm going to see you out there maybe? Yeah, Sunday. Okay. Sunday? Okay. You coming? I'm not sure. I've got, uh, we're going to be at the at the quarry. Oh, that's right. Yes. Steph and I are Saturday evening, mm -hmm. so probably won't be going up. I'll see if I can make it up there Sunday. Three words, Mike. Pretzel on me. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh, see, almost and got him. Cake. 620, what's that? And potato cake. Uh, whatever you want, buddy. And, and, and a potato cake. Yeah. And <laughs> if he shows up, I'm going to be stunned. <laughs> and I'll owe him. That's okay. 622, 66 degrees. All right, sorry Euphoria fans, you will have to wait another year for the third season, but they're not the only ones waiting up next. What shows are currently on the shelf? We're still going for that nice catch. We're still going for that sweet shot. And with higher stroke risk from AFib not caused by a heart valve problem, we're going for a better treatment than warfarin. Eliquis. Eliquis reduces stroke risk and has less major bleeding. Over 97% of Eliquis patients did not experience a stroke. Don't stop taking Eliquis without talking to your doctor as this may increase your risk of stroke. Eliquis can cause serious and in rare cases fatal bleeding. Don't take Eliquis if you have an artificial heart valve or abnormal bleeding. While taking, you may bruise more easily or take longer for bleeding to stop. Get help right away for unexpected bleeding or unusual bruising. It may increase your bleeding risk if you take certain medicines. Tell your doctor about all planned medical or dental procedures. The number one cardiologist prescribed blood thinner. We're going for it. Ask your doctor about Eliquis. In this morning's GMA First Look, an AI parenting alert. My first initial feeling obviously was a shock. Students and parents at New Jersey's Westfield High School now grappling with fake AI-generated nude photos of non-consenting students allegedly created by fellow students. I came home and I told my mom and I told her that we have to do something about this because it isn't fair to the girls and it's just not right. 14-year-old Francesca Mani was one of the victims. Her mother devastated. Now they're speaking out to GMA. We should be teaching our boys that there will be consequences. The school's principal in a letter to parents saying, at this time, we believe that any created images have been deleted and are not being circulated. This is a very serious incident. We are continuing to investigate. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have much more on how this unfolded. With your GMA First Look, I'm Eva Pilgrim, ABC News, New York. A spokesperson for HBO has confirmed the critically acclaimed drama series Euphoria. Well, it won't be returning until 2025. The third season will also mark the first since the death of star Angus Cloud, who passed away over the summer. But they're not the only ones. Stranger Things, The Last of Us, Law and Order, as well as late night talk shows are part of the 30 plus shows that are on hold. Also, Dune 2 was supposed to come out this weekend. Currently, about 25 movies are delayed. Well, listen up, Bachelors and Bachelorettes, no, and not that dating show. Uh, Lifetime Network, the reality TV show Married at First Sight, is casting in the Austin area this month. You're looking at the 70-question questionnaire all applicants will have to fill out. Questions range from dating deal breakers to what your upbringing was like. And even though it's a reality show, this is a real deal. It's a legally binding marriage. Yikes. Yeah. Over, that's why those 70 questions are, you know, really important. Over the course of 16 seasons, 
12 out of the 64 couples are still together, so low percentage here. <laughs> so there are some success stories at 12%. So if you do get married through this show, make sure to send those wedding pictures to KSAT Connect and check out this article on our website for the link to the application. Are you applying I, right now? No, what are you doing? No, I'm just thinking, I never took statistics, but those, those odds are not in, not in your favor. anyone's favor. No. No, they are not. All right, 627, 66 degrees. While we're two days away from Republican candidate debate, who can be expected to be there and who's sitting out? Time is ticking for Texas lawmakers during this special session. Attentions are high between Republicans. Taking a live look out of the roads with Trans Guide, people are out and about. The sun starting to peak up. I mean, it's like basically daylight out there right now. Hey, we'll have your weather and traffic when we come back. Time ticking for lawmakers as the 30 day special session is coming to a close. What you need to know if you're planning on voting tomorrow as well. 66 degrees at 631 with daylight saving time. Sun coming up earlier this morning. It's a nice thing to see. Hey, but cold front coming in a couple days. Mike will let us know about that in just a bit. It's about time, right? Good morning, yeah. everybody. It's Monday, November 6th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And I can't wait for that cold front for the weekend. Worst Fest continues start at this weekend ends next weekend. It's the finale up in New Braunfels. Yes, it is going to be very nice if you're heading up there today, tomorrow, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a little bit if you Friday evening, though, is looking like it's going to uh, pan out pretty nice for that. Now, this cold front's not going to be quite as potent as the one that moved through last week, you know, gave us the cold uh, Halloween, but still it's going to knock temperatures back down to the other side of normal since we've been above normal all weekend long. Yes, we're starting to see the glow right here, but we do have some clouds hanging around here starting off this morning. 66 dew point 64. These two numbers neck and neck. That's why when you have that high of humidity, relative humidity, you're starting to see some fog around the area, but we do have a bit of a breeze and that cloud cover also tends to help out somewhat, but not the situation up there in New Braunfels this morning. Half mile visibility, nothing around the metropolitan area right now. Just watch it though. If you're coming down 35 or heading up 35, uh, there's some fog around Austin as well. Randolph yesterday, of course, you've had some fog development developing and a lot of times you get it around New Braunfels that seems to kind of edge its way in toward Randolph down around Beeville. A lot of thick fog heading down 37. Nothing in the hill country this morning. Yesterday, of course, we had that spot in Kerrville, but again, a lot of the ingredients are in place. Just kind of watch it. Mold, ragweed, fall elm are all on the low side, so mostly cloudy. 82 today. It's going to be breezy then tomorrow as well as Wednesday. Very warm, somewhat on the humid side, but if, like I said, if you're going up to Worst Fest, it's going to be really pleasant for that. Thursday, the front comes on through here. That is going to touch off some showers, a couple of thunderstorms later in the day on Thursday, overnight, uh, Friday morning as well. Even some heavier downpours can't be can't be uh, avoided with that. And then we'll have on Friday breezy conditions after some of that morning rain, and it's going to be windy even into Saturday. Cooler temperatures, highs, like I said, are going to be on the other side of normal, so we'll be anywhere 5 to 10 degrees below normal for the weekend, which means 60s. Good looking weekend. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, anything big out there? Well, you know what? The sun looks like it's peeking up over here, Mike, as we get a look out there at US 90 at Couples. Let's just take that shot in. Sarah mentioned this earlier. It looks like the sun is peeking up over there. And so for drivers, if you are heading out the door, you'll have some quiet roadways and a nice view. So, but just remember, keep those eyes on the road. Thankfully, no major issues are being reported at this hour. Just a few stalled vehicles. This one reported at 410 northbound near I-10, and you could see a little bit of de a delay for anyone that's heading south southbound in that direction, so just watch out. Let's take a drive a little bit further down in there because we have another salt at 410 eastbound and I-37. This is not causing any issues, but if you're traveling through the area, as always, make sure to move over or slow down. Wider view of our map is going to show a little bit more of uh, activity taking place out there. US 90, you saw that uh, trans guide camera. We're seeing a bit more traffic pick up in the eastbound lanes and over there near Leon Valley, another stall reported. So it's around that time where things start to shift out on the roadways, but I'm going to keep a close eye on things and I'll have another update for you coming up a little bit later on in the newscast. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. It seems that words were not enough. San Antonio police say someone used a gun to end an argument. The man who was shot is being treated at a hospital. Katrina Weber is live downtown. And Katrina, you say police are still looking for the shooter? 
Well, that's right. And based on the information they've shared with us so far, it doesn't sound like they have a lot to go on. They told us simply that the shooter left the area in a dark colored car. The police found the victim still at the scene. It was a parking lot at the corner of North Sarsamora and Culebra Road. They got the call about the shooting after 11 last night. Officers say the two men had been involved in an argument or fight over some sort of property. They say one pulled out a gun and shot the other, then again took off in that dark colored car. The man who was shot was wounded in his stomach. The last word we had is that he was in critical condition at a hospital. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We're just two days away from the third Republican presidential debate. And while we don't know the final list of candidates participating, we do know the stage will be a little less crowded compared to the last debate. ABC News says Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, Vivek Ramaswamy and Chris Christie have met the requirements to participate in Wednesday's debate. But it's still up in the air if Tim Scott will join them on stage in Miami. Former President Trump plans to skip the debate again. Meanwhile, Doug Burgum and Asa Hutchinson did not meet polling requirements to be on stage. And former Vice President Mike Pence, of course, won't be there after he dropped out of the race last week. Happening today, former President Donald Trump is taking the witness stand in his New York state civil fraud trial. The New York state attorney general accuses Trump, his sons and other company executives of inflating the former president's net worth to get better loans and insurance. Both of Trump's adult sons have already testified in the trial, and his daughter Ivanka is scheduled to take the stand on Wednesday. Trump and his sons have denied any wrongdoing in the investigation. And tomorrow, the latest 30-day special session here in Texas is set to wrap up. Lawmakers failed yesterday to discuss House Bill 4, resulting in more tension between some Republicans and leaving little time to take up school choice legislation as well. So an optimist might say, negotiations move forward, but we simply ran out of time. A pessimist would say, if anything, the animosity among the negotiators has grown more acute, not less. In some of his strongest words against House Speaker Dave Phelan, Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick writes the speaker has become nothing more than hot air. Speaker Phelan, Phelan fired back, calling Patrick's comments a desperate bid to salvage what's less of his credibility on border security. In a tweet, Patrick says he would support having the next special session on February 5th, 30 days before primary elections. But Governor Greg Abbott says, quote, we are on track to ensure there will not be another special session, end quote. Early voting has wrapped up, so that means tomorrow is your last chance to cast your vote and make your voice heard. This year's ballot has no federal government positions on it, but there are a few local seats up for grabs and more than a dozen Texas constitutional amendments for you to vote on. So just take a look at your screen. You can scan this QR code for a complete ballot breakdown to find more information on polling places near you. Again, tomorrow is the only day to cast your votes if you didn't do so during early voting. 638, 66 degrees. We survived a cold front, but it definitely won't be the last. After the break, we'll check out an organization here in San Antonio that's helping kids stay warm this season. You might want to check your freezer after hearing this. Tyson Foods recalling about 30,000 pounds of chicken nuggets. The company announced this weekend they're voluntarily pulling the nuggets from stores after some people reported finding small pieces of metal inside the patties. The recall specifically for the 29 ounce bag of dino nuggets containing frozen but fully cooked nuggets. The USDA says there's been one minor injury in someone's mouth while eating this food. Well, we experienced a little bit of it last week. Winter is coming and will eventually get here in San Antonio. An organization is making sure kids were, are able to stay warm as we face more cold fronts. The United Way is hosting their ninth annual Project Warm Coat Drive. Their goal is to get at least 500 coats donated before Thanksgiving. All coats that are donated will go to families United Way works with. It's gonna help countless families um, and it's going to provide them, you know, a little bit of comfort during the next couple of months. Donations will be accepted through November 21st at several local coffee shops in our area. Those include the Starbucks in the quarry, early bird coffee on I-10 and almost perk on McCullough Avenue. People can actually go to these coffee shops, get a nice cup of coffee, especially support a, a small business in the case of early bird and almost perk um, and drop off a coat to help make a difference in a child's life. You can also donate by texting Project Warmth 
to 41444 or by heading to United Way's website. You can also find that link on KSAT.com. 49 days till Christmas and the Rotary Ice Skating Rink is coming back. It opens November 17th at Travis Park, but that's not this Friday. It's next Friday. Admission is $15 for military and first responders. It's $10. This is the only outdoor ice skating rink in San Antonio with nearly 200,000 people lacing up for a skate. Not all at not, once. I was say, not all at once. <laughs> okay. One person fall. No. <laughs> for the whole month of November, military personnel can enjoy free admission to the San Antonio Zoo and up to four of their guests can receive 50% off. This is called Zoo Salutes, presented by USAA. For more information, just look for this article on KSAT.com. Time check, 644. Stephen, what's happening with traffic? Not a lot, Sarah. Thankfully, traffic's just getting a little bit busier. I've not seen any crashes reported, so that's good news, especially for a Monday and as we enter morning rush. Right behind me, 410 at New Braunfels. Traffic looks like it is picking up a little bit out there. And 410 at Ray Ellison, we did have some overnight construction. You can see some of the crews still out there, but that has since wrapped up. You can see also there at this shot, we have traffic that is continuing to just move along pretty steadily. But watch out, stall vehicles, 410 northbound at I-10. That still is being reported by text dot. No major delays, but we're starting to see a little bit more of that yellow take over our screen. Down here, that saw at 410 eastbound and I-37 has cleared out. But as we show you the wider view of the map, a lot more activity is taking place out there, guys. The red congestion is taking over our map, and we're going to have to pack our patience this morning, especially along US-90, where that installation work will continue. Don't forget, it starts at 9 this morning and should finish at 3 in the afternoon, but this takes us all the way to the end of the work week. Plan ahead because there will be alternating ramp closures from 36th Street to Couples Road. Other than that, the roads here on Transguide look to be just fine. I'm not spotting any other problems out there, so fingers crossed. Morning rush has just begun, so no need to rush out the door, at least just yet. Thank you, buddy. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Stephen. It's one of the coolest pictures we've had in a long time. A lot of times you see the planet Saturn just as a small little pin oh. dot of light, but if you have a really, really good telescope, look at that. And there are the rings around the planet as well, one of the four gas giants. And I was just actually just reading about the planets yesterday. And the rings are, in some cases, only a couple of feet thick, right. and in some cases, meters thick, and basically made up of little, um, little chunks of ice and, and tiny rocks. It's amazing uh -huh. what you can see with a basic telescope, uh -huh. and to see it with your own eyes is truly amazing. Very cool looking. Thank you very much for the uh, the KSAC Connect picture. All right, we're not seeing anything uh, celestial this morning. Got a lot of clouds hanging around here. Uh, we are seeing some very thick fog, though. Visibility continues to drop down there in New Braunfels, and that's going to sort of spread uh, in toward Canyon Lake area and maybe even further on down to the south. Now, we do have a bit of a breeze here in town, which helps to prevent a lot of the fog from forming up, but uh, we're just going to have to watch it for the next couple of hours. Fog up around Austin, Beeville, all the way down here to the southeast going down 37. Nothing out in the hill country. We had some yesterday, but again, just be on the lookout for this, especially in eastern, northeastern Bear County over here, right around Seguin, uh, Gonzales, even Wilson County this morning, just to watch out for some of this fog trying to form up all because of all the humidity. Of course, we had fog yesterday, but we have got even more humidity than what we had around here yesterday. Dew points have gone up 11 degrees, so you definitely notice it when you step outside, when you get these dew points that are above 60 and that's where they are right now and that's going to be the case with relatively higher humidity enough to notice it throughout the rest of today as well as going into tomorrow as well as going into Wednesday. Then we'll start to see some changes, but not until later on in the afternoon on Thursday. So temperature steady next couple of hours. A little bit of that leftover fog, maybe some sunshine thrown in. I know we didn't have a whole heck of a lot yesterday. That's going to be similar situation today. 78 at noon, above the normal high already at noon. 82 high temperature today. Again, plenty of clouds and enough humidity that you're going to feel it. Now, going up, jumping ahead to Thursday again, we've got that chance for some showers as the front approaches, and especially later Thursday night and into Friday morning. Again, long range model tends to have a nice wide brush painting this all in here, but again, some decent chances and there is going to be the, the shot at some heavier downpours as well. So that'll be something we have to watch out for overnight and into early Friday morning, especially off there to the east. Friday rain primarily first portion of the day. 
then starts to clear on out. So as it's looking right now, it's going to be nice for football on Friday. Going to be a nice weekend to go to Worst Fest today, tomorrow, Wednesday as well. But it'll have that nice good Worst Fest feeling to it this weekend. Uh, temperatures 5 to 10 degrees above normal the next few days. Again, the front comes through here in mid-afternoon on Thursday. We will get the cooler temperatures coming on in only 60 on Friday and then low to mid 60s over the weekend and low temperatures aren't going to be as cold as where they were again a couple of weeks ago. We'll have still some humidity hanging around here and plenty of clouds. But it's going to be nice and good and good looking weekend. And again, Steph and I Saturday evening going to be out there at the quarry for the big guy Santa to welcome him. It's, the it's about that time. My neighbors yeah. across the street, they already put up their Christmas decorations. They look great. And I know this weekend will be a good weekend to start putting de decorations. It, it will be. Uh, hopefully we don't get any rain. There's still a chance for a couple little sprinkles, maybe Saturday, Sunday. I kind of doubt it. I think most of it's going to be on out of mm -hmm. here. So hopefully you can get those up. So would that'd it be maybe great if Santa complimented you on your beard. I know you got it. You have like what, five days to get it growing. I know <laughs> team same, goals, same color, <laughs> team, team gray hair with Santa Claus. Oh, <laughs> white, white, okay. yeah, yeah. 649, 66 degrees. Join us tomorrow on GMSA. We discuss Chagas. It's a pet disease that's becoming more common in and around our community. We'll hear from a San Antonio veterinarian on what symptoms to look out for, how to test and what treatment looks like. So all weekend long, I was thinking, what's what's our Monday morning going to look like with the time change as far as the sun being up? And here it is, 10 till 7, and it's up. It's a bit on the gray side, though. Nonetheless, happy Monday. Thanks for watching us. We'll be right back. Before you go, this month is Diabetes Awareness Month, and with diabetes being the eighth leading cause of death here in the U.S., it's a great time to understand the risks and how to prevent them. That's why Dr. Catalina Solis Herrera, Chief of Endocrinology Division at UT Health San Antonio, joined us on Leading SA yesterday to discuss issues surrounding our community when it comes to diabetes. The doctor joined us and we discussed how pervasive diabetes is in and around our San Antonio area. We talked about the symptoms, what to look out for, and of course, we talked about quick tips for families who are watching, what they need to know so that their children could possibly avoid this disease. So the most important thing is a healthy lifestyle. Improve your weight, eat vegetables, green vegetables, non-starchy vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, beans, lentils, and try to incorporate that in every meal. So having a good weight and good physical activity more than three times a week, 30 minutes, everything counts. So if you park a little bit farther, if you do a couple of flights of stairs, everything helps to keep you at a better weight and more physically active. We also talked about distinguishing between type one and type two diabetes, what being pre-diabetic means and special events happening around San Antonio on World Diabetes Day. That's November 14th. Of course, you can check out the full conversation with the doctor right now. Just head to KSAT.com. We have leading us every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So guys, we'll see you next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. About five till seven. Check in with Stephen on traffic. Well, things took a turn really quickly here. Uh, we do have a crash reported at I-35 northbound at Thousand Oaks. As we give you a look there, it could be impacting traffic here at 35 North at Loop 410, close to that interchange. So you have to pack your patience and watch out for those first responders who are out there working to clear the scene. I'll talk to our friends at Transguy to see if they can show us the conditions, but right now we do know that a few lanes are blocked. Also, if you're heading along I-35 northbound near McCullough, another crash also reported where one lane is blocked, Mike. Thank you very much, sir. Heading up 35, going to run into some fog. Actually, uh, visibility has improved slightly up there around New Braunfels, but this is going to be sticking around throughout the rest of the morning. And a lot of fog down there to the southeast around uh, Beeville. We've got temperatures in the 60s right now, way above where we should be. Going to be warm today on the breezy side as well. Pretty much same thing tomorrow, Wednesday, front Thursday, rain overnight into early Friday, and nice, cool fall temperatures for the weekend. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to Worst Fest this coming yeah. weekend. Yeah. It's going to be great. To, nice weather for it this next couple of days, but this weekend, perfect. Perfect. Have a great day. Hey, GMA is next. We'll be back here for GMSA at 9.